Subscribe to Roost and Gaming before the 15th of December for your chance to win this pre-heresy Araman figure. Today on Roost Sim Gaming we're going to be painting this Bell Tan Warp Hunter using airbrushes, stencils and some cool galaxy effects. So as a quick beginning, I just thought I'd show you guys um, basically that I've glued, partially glued parts of it together so that I can paint and spray each bit individually. Uh, that bit of course is going to go onto there, um, the weapon will go in there but the weapon is going to be painted separately. I've got the guy there for the crew cockpit and of course I've got the base unit which base unit is going to be white and then that bit's going to be green. That's going to be green, but I'm going to do something special with the end of the cannon. And of course the character just needs painting before we stick the canopy on. Now what I've done, if you actually have part building like this, sometimes it's better. I cut off the little tab that makes it swing. Uh, so that's just basically just going to sit and I'm just going to glue that in there once everything has been painted. And varnish. Don't varnish with that on your figure because it will ghost and it will look horrible. Now just before we crack on with priming, I'm going to show you something regarding the little hole here and the little stems that you get. Now, yep, these do fit perfectly. The problem is, I find, especially after playing Eldar since the second edition of the game, these break very, very easily and they snap off quite, to be honest with you, quite quickly. Now, a lot of people will drill them bigger. Um, I don't drill it bigger. What I actually do is to get a craft knife. Yes, and it's a bit, uh, I think I've got glue on the end, but there we go. And then put it into the hole and twist like it is a drill. Now what this will do, it'll make sure it's an old blade or a sharpish blade. It'll get rid of the plastic, it'll make the hole bigger, but it does it at an angle. So, bit of a bigger, Hole there, so when you put this in, it'll sink more on there. Now I do have to make this hole a bit bigger, but it'll actually sink on the uh, the stem. So if the stem ever breaks, you can just drill out the bit and you just put it in. It's, it's very, very easy to do. Right, it's not that difficult. It's just patience on uh, on drilling it out. You could, if you wanted to, just use a big drill. But there you go, you see? You see how that goes straight in on the actual stem itself rather than resting on that little bit. And that will actually give you a much more solid purchase, allowing you to use the larger stems and it'll basically not break as much. So I've primed the figures. So this guy here has been primed white and I've already gone and done the uh, lining, which is just gonna be with Agrax Surf Shade. So that's just pretty much going to be pure white. Um, this one I've done a black spray and then done a white spray just over the top just to give it a bit of, uh, like I suppose, a uh, pre-shade effect. I don't like going on pre-shading with all the whites. I just prefer to sort of do it with rattle cans. And then of course just a back panel, the gun itself, which I've masked off because that bit's going to be green. And the other bit, I'm going to do some, try and do something, well, try and do something special with that. Um, so I'm going to crack on now. I'm going to uh, start spraying some airbrushing, some green all over the uh, this bit here and that bit there. So now I've done the green uh, over the top. Shade has not really kicked in, but uh, I'm going to be adding some more green to it. It's going to be the warp stone, and that's going to be airbrushed on. Um, I didn't show you the airbrush for the basic green because it's just a basic application through the airbrush itself. I'm leaving the tips uh, white. This is nothing to do with holding it. This is actually going to be something to do with uh, a technique we're going to use later on.
up there. And it's kind of the effect that we're going for with the green. I am going to add now a little tiny bit of moot. That's going to be applied by airbrush. Just tiny, tiny spots of it, just to make it stick out, and then I might dry brush the edges with it as well. So this is the effect that I'm going for. I have dry brushed some of the edges with the milk green just to give it a bit of an edge. Probably see it more on there. Sorry about that camera, I'm not used to camera being so far up. Um, so now what I'm gonna do, now that these bits have been painted, I've already, like I said before, I'd already done that one, but I've also painted the engine how the engine ports that are gonna stick out through here black and uh, the end of that is black now these i'm going to paint using uh, i'm going to airbrush a bit of dry re uh, dark reaper on there and then dry brush with adamant uh, Adist uh administratum gray yeah that'll do you can see that and that's the dark reaper that's been sprayed on them and a bit of a dry brush of administratum grey um, just to sort of pick out the fact that it's going to be sat on top and then I've done that to the engine housings as well it's very very subtle on the engine houses you probably can't see it that well but it'll just be nice once of course the canopy's on top right let's look at some possible assembling. Now for the next section we're going to use a hex mesh stencil from Fallout Hobbies. Uh, this is basically going to get the transition of the white coming in and we're going to try and keep it to about there. Um, so like don't be over spraying that bit and then just making sure that it comes into the nice crisp white that I'm wanting to do. Um, had something similar happen on a um, on the, the one that I did for the Nightwing which hopefully should be up here somewhere and uh, yeah so we're gonna uh, crack on and uh, get this effect going by painting a nebula now on the end of this so make sure you've got your side that you wanted to go up into the vehicle and I'm going to kind of paint a nebula area then I'm going to start off just with a very generic white Next we're going to 
apply a light blue, very thinly, it's, it's pretty much like water this, what's in here, very thin, all pretty much all over the white, maybe just leaving the center pieces. So the next colour that's going to go on is going to be purple. I'm using a um, douche violet shade because of course that's going to be nice and thin anyway. Okay, next we're going to go with a, a magenta looking colour. This is actually Caribou Crimson and Empress Children Pink mixed together. The reason I've done that is because I'm going to go on to Empress Children Pink straight eventually. Next, we're going to basically go straight Empress Children Pink. It's very watered down, and we're going to pretty much kind of go over a lot of the white areas. Now, next step, we're going to paint in some stars. Keep some of your pink handy because you might want to. Go back over and just kind of mute down and then do some more stars on top. So guys, so the next thing I'm going to be doing is the pilot. Uh, these two parts of course are separate. And I'm going to paint the pilot separately, then stick it into that. That'll all be then glued together. And I'll look at doing some transfers and sticking everything else on. Maybe even doing some weird colours coming out of the vents. Right, uh, I'm using two colours for to start with. I'm going to use Addison Stratum Grey and Skull White in a uh, yeah wet palette. So Addison Stratum Grey first, and then of course just building up and building up and building up until we can get to the lovely pure white. So as you can see, nice simple. Uh, transition between the white and the grey. I've done the green as well and that's been done the same way using the actual uh, wet palette and you'd be surprised how quick you can get these things done. Now I'm going to paint the blue screens and his visor and possibly do his hair and then skin and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So for the screens we're going to start off with Caldor Sky and we're going to go up to uh, Teclas Blue this again is going to be done on a wet palette. We're going to mix it, make it a palette, and of course apply it to what's going to need it. So certain gems may have the blue on, probably not mainly on that one though, it's going to be more red gems. Uh, but of course the targeting little nodule up there, that's going to have one. And then his visor and the screen inside here is also going to be painted up blue.
So wet pelleted the flesh and the hair's just been done with a bit of Talan sand and then bleach bone just kind of over the top again, just wet pelleting it. If you want to add a shade to it, you can do, but again, it's going to go into a glass canopy. It's going to be able to be seen, but not that fantastically. So it's not something I'm going to spend too much time on. So now we've done the pilot, we're going to do the gems. So I'm only going to do the gems really you can see. So there's a couple of gems on the underneath of this that you could probably have a look at. But nothing really at the bottom. Um, and I'm going to use four colours. It's going to be corn red, followed by Mephisto and red, followed by Evil Sun Scarlet, followed by Troll Slayer Orange. Uh, this is all going to be just, again, in the wet palette, just layered up, layered up, layered up. Again, with the wet palette, you haven't got to really wait for each transition to dry, which is always a benefit. It's a massive benefit, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to crack on with that right now. gems have been done very simple gems it's just basically four colors and a bit of a white dot um, they will get covered in hard coat after I spray it because I'll be spraying it with testers which is a dull coat so that'll actually dull it down and then when I put the gloss back on that will then bring it back up to scratch the next step with the vehicle after gluing it together I'm just gonna kind of pay off the actual uh, uh, driver, I'm not going to put the canopy on until the very, very end. Don't ever put those on before you do any varnishing. And I'm going to just give it a light coat of Mecha varnish, just to give it that sort of uh, sheen. So next, we're going to paint these vents. Uh, I'm going to get a bit of a uh, bit of paper just to protect the rest of the figure because I don't want the rest of the figure to have well, apart from maybe up there a little bit the concoction I'm using is actually it's Techless uh, what do I call it sorry it's uh, Techless Blue with white scar and a little bit of Nylex Oxide mixed into it and it makes a quite a nice concoction to be honest Once it's dried a little bit, I uh, so put a bit of Gulliman glaze into the recesses, uh, which will make it and kind of highlight it now for me. And uh, I'm going to take that off and I'm going to go and varnish it using Tester's Dull Coat. Once I've used uh, Tester's on now, I'll go over the gems with Hard Coat, maybe even a mixture of the, um, uh, yeah, the other stuff, and then of course uh, I'll. Uh, put it onto a base and we can see the final result and there you go so you've got the glass canopy on the varnish has been added into the right places items the whole entire item has been tested so majority of the uh, any sort of like icons I've got on there are gonna dull down inside the uh, well make it look like it's painted on and that's it not too shabby uh, good tabletop quality, as always, for myself. I uh, can't be bothered trying to paint like Golden Demon. But thank you very much for watching, guys. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button for more. And uh, hopefully we'll be back next week with a different painting video. Don't forget as well, also post uh, just a random computer game-like video on Tuesdays. I've got a Doom series running every Wednesday. And of course, a fresh 40k normally. Battle Report, sometimes Titanic is sometimes t Kill Team, even though that is pretty much the same universe, um, or every Thursday. So, thank you very much, guys. Uh, see you next time.